Hi, and welcome to this week's weekly wrap up for Friday, August 23rd, 2024. Thank you for joining us as always. If you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit that personalization button so you don't miss a minute of these updates. So for this week's shows, as you know, we had Dr. Dave Sandoval, the founder of Perium, give a lot of good insight and testimonies into his background, how he started the company, and a lot of the benefits of those products from a scientific and health standpoint. Uh, we also had the one and only David Mahoney getting his geopolitical insights, and we always enjoy the banter between him and I, and I, we pray that you enjoy it as well and gain a lot of knowledge out of it accordingly, according to the numbers it seems to suggest that you do. So we're glad that that's resonating with you. Next week, we don't have any shows as we're transitioning September where we will have a lot. It's going to be a powder keg month, as I think all of you know. So without further ado, as always, we have much to cover, so let's get started. Here are the weekly headlines. Zonar Systems, a Seattle-based company that provides electronic fleet inspection and tracking systems for public and private fleets, laid off 57 positions this week. A popular restaurant and bar in the heart of downtown Wichita Falls is now permanently closed, adding its name to a growing list of local and chain restaurants and storefronts that have closed within recent months. <clears throat> since, since the early 1960s, Six Flags has grown to become one of the world's largest theme parks at one point operating over 37 parks around the world. Their parks were beloved with such vaunted uh, places as Six Flags over Texas, Magic Mountain and Great Adventure. But after a series of bad decisions, the company failed to make slightest profit and has now ultimately declared bankruptcy. America's leading gas and oil producer ExxonMobil has issued layoffs as part of a workforce restructuring in the wake of a $60 billion acquisition deal. Stuart Haas to lay off more than 300 employees. General Motors is laying off over 1,000 salaried employees globally in its software services division as part of a strategic move in order to streamline operations and focus on higher priority initiatives as reported by CNBC and Bloomberg. <clears throat> These layoffs include 600 jobs at GM's tech campus near Detroit, Michigan. Cuts represent about one third of GM's global salaried workforce, which was 76,000 employees at the end of last year. Since the 1970s, Borders bookstores have been a place of comfort and peace for millions of shoppers. Their unique strategy of offering a cozy place to shop with tens of thousands of highly trained employees was a winning one that earned the company billions in sales. But it all came crashing down in 2011, and now the brand is officially non-existent. All remaining Ted Baker shops in the UK and Republic of Ireland are expected to have been shut down by the end of the day this past Tuesday after the company fell behind the fashion chain collapsed and into administration in March. More than 500 jobs are at risk as a result of these closures, which will see stores disappear from high streets. Target has announced plans to end personal check payments at their checkouts, feeding into the ongoing, ongoing decline of paper checks being used within the US. Rite Aid to shut down 850 locations as part of a chapter 11 in particular, they shut down all stores in Michigan and Ohio as customers in those states scrambled to get the necessary medications. Morton Salt lays off 40% of employees at its Chicago headquarters under new investment firm owner. Aldi is shutting down its click and collect service from 174 of its shops today and a move shopper said will leave the elderly and disabled shoppers distraught. The budget supermarket has pulled the plug on this service which allowed customers to pay a $4.99 pound charge for their supermarket shops to be picked up and brought to their car by a staff member. In Tel Aviv, according to Reuters, Secretary of State Anthony, Bl Anthony Blinken arrived in Tel Aviv on Sunday on a Middle East tour aimed at intensifying diplomatic pressure to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza this week in order to end the bloodshed between Israeli and Palestinian militant group Hamas. Winnipeg, Canada-based food delivery company Skip the Dishes is laying off 800 employees in Canada and missed a continuing downturn within the business. About 100 workers are being let go from Skip the Dishes with another 700 staff members dismissed as its parent company, JustEatTakeaway.com. Skip the Dishes has been a going concern in Canada since 2012. It was acquired in December 2016 for $110 million by Just Eat, which has since now merged with Takeaway.com. Shoppers were left so sad by the loss of a city Marks and Spencer branch that one customer even more mourning attire for her last psalm walk between the aisles around the racks. The store, which was known as a stalwart of Leicester, shut down the, for the final time on Saturday 
As the doors closed, staff gathered for a round of applause in recognition of the time there. Nordstrom is closing two corporate offices and asking some employees to relocate their Seattle headquarters, GeekWire has learned. Nordstrom confirmed that it will now let leases expire at its offices in Los Angeles and Chicago, citing low usage of the spaces as the primary reason for the decision. Dollar General closes five stores in New Orleans East. These closures are due to underperformance. Experts cite oversaturation as the primary cause. This will shift the Dollar General's expansion strategy into closures. Five, area, five Detroit area restaurants uh, of closures to note. Number one, Mohegan Regent, <clears throat> formerly known as Capers, famous for steak by the ounce pricing. Core City, Detroit Institute of Bagels. Royal Oak, the Mori. Downtown Hannah House, an Asian fusion inspired restaurant that opened in 2022, now is closed permanently. And five, St. Clair Shores, JMX Brewing Company will be closing at the end of the month. The Bank of Queen, Queensland is set to shed up to 600 staff as part of a simplification and digitization drive. This announcement comes just a year after the bank, which specializes in lending to regional Queensland, previously, previously announced that 250 jobs would be going. 70 people to lose jobs as strip restaurant closes. According to and adding, excuse me, adding to the seemingly relentless layoffs in the video game industry over the past year, Corsair has announced plans that will let go of roughly 90 staff members and a quote, organization change, unquote. While Corsair remains one of the top companies for self-built PC products and gaming accessories, the continuous financial struggles of the industry have once again resulted in a workforce reduction. Estee Lauder is on the lookout for a new CEO after announcing Fabrizio Frida's upcoming retirement which will take place at the end of June, 2025. Frida has been with the beauty company since 2008 when he first hi was first hired as president. The following year became CEO taking over for William Lauder, son of Leonard Lauder, heir to the Estee Lauder companies. In Paris, according to Reuters, LVMH owned beauty retailer Sephora is cutting its workforce in China, the company said on Wednesday as consumers curb their spending on creams and makeup in the world's number two economy. Sephora, which sells largely high-end or prestige perfumes and makeup, previously had around 4,000 employees in the country, which has been one of the world's fastest growing beauty markets in recent years. Several branches of KFC closed down suddenly on Monday morning, and the move came with mass layoffs for KFC employees across the state. The Illinois locations were all run by franchisee EYM chicken operations with some employees being notified as late as 9 a.m. <clears throat> An increasing number of businesses across varying sectors have been recently forced to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy with reasons including increased labor costs, high debts, and a lack of football. Excuse me, football. <laughs> the latest business to file a Chapter 11 bankruptcy report is One Table, the parent company of Tender Greens, and Takaya, but what has forced the popular chain to go under? The wine business has not been spared from the carnage. Ohio's Myers Winery, a brand that started in 1890, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in late July. That historic company has now been followed into bankruptcy by a winery located in the state that's not one of the first ones you would associate when it comes to wine. Alimentation Couchet Tard is looking to acquire another major convenience store player in seven and I owners of the popular 7-Eleven convenience store chain. The Canadian company whose brands include Couchet Tard, Circle K, and Ingo recently sent a friendly non-binding non proposal to Japan-based 7 and I. Couchet Tard revealed in a press release on Monday. 7 and I has a swath of convenience stores and supermarkets and other businesses under its umbrella, which includes 7-Eleven. It has roughly 85,000 stores globally. <clears throat> A council has announced cutting a number of roles and a reshuffle to help bridge a financial gap of 80 million pounds. Somerset's council, eight lead members will be reduced to seven while associate members will be cut from 10 to six. About 36,000 will be saved from the changes which will take effect from September 1. The cuts follow the authority declaring a final emergency in November of 2023. Now here are the latest uh, precious metals and oil commodities as of the time of this recording. Gold is now at an all-time high at $2,514.50. 
Silver at $29.04, Brent crude holding steady at $76.98. But again, remember folks, these prices are subject to change as the economy worsens. We know gold and silver go up exponentially. And once the Middle East conflict gins up, which we are expecting shortly, you will see those Brent crude prices strike up significantly as we have talked about many, many months ago. Now here are the notable deaths and resignations for the week. Scottish conservative leadership contest descended into chaos yesterday after the party's de deputy leader resigned over deeply troubling allegations about Douglas Ross. Megan Gallagher quit after the leader was accused of secretly plotting for a year to secure a new Westminster seat while publicly insisting he was devoted to Ho Hollywood. Kathleen Jamie, the national poet for Scotland, or Macar, is stepping down from a role as the Scottish government is preparing to find a suitable successor. Barry Henry has resigned from his role as manager of France's youth teams after earning a silver medal at the Paris Olympics, the French Football Federation announced on Monday. Henry, who won the 1998 World Cup with his country, cited personal reasons as the motivation for his decision in the FFF press release. Rutgers athletic director Pat Hobbs resigned suddenly Friday afternoon, ending the stint of the athletic director with the longest continued tenor, tenure within the Big Ten. Hobbs will be replaced on an interim basis by Deputy Athletic Director Ryan Passari as the school begins a search for its permanent replacement. According to Bloomberg, Rothschild and Company shuttered its Miami office after opening it last year, a person familiar with the matter said. <clears throat> Eric Hirschfeld, a partner who led that outpost as well as the firm Chicago office, retired to spend time with family and on personal pursuits, according to a memo seen by Bloomberg. He had joined Rothschild's global advisory arm in 2016 from Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. A renowned Belfast chef is closing two of his three restaurants in Dublin as he warned the industry is no longer sustainable. Dylan McGrath is closing Brasserie 66 and Rustic Stone, the former after 25 years in business and the latter after 15. The restaurateur was born in Dublin and raised in Belfast, where he was best known for his work in Roscoe, excuse me, Roscoff's, and then the North's only Michelin starred restaurant. Sam Saunders, the grandson of Arnold Palmer, announced he's retiring from the professional golf scene after missing the cut this week at the Corn Ferry Tours Maglit Championship. Saunders, just 37, who made more than 150 career starts on both the PGA Tour and Corn Ferry Tour, was mired in the worst season of his career. He had made just four cuts this season on the Corn Ferry Tour and missed the cut in nine of his last 10 starts. He ranked 157th in the season-long point standing and had earned only $29,920. He shot 71 for 75 and missed the cut on Friday. USAA CEO Wayne Peacock announces he is retiring from the insurance industry in 2025. America's Got Talent alum and comedian Perry Kurtz was struck and killed in a hit and run crash on Thursday, police said Kurtz was 73. An 18 year old suspect was arrested on Friday after the driver was involved in a hit and run traffic collision on August 15th, around 11.20 p.m. LA Police Department announced in a press release. The suspect was identified as Nathan Jamies, a resident of Reseda. John Lansing, the former chief executive of public radio program distributor NPR died this week at the age of 67. Cause of death was not immediately known, his passing occurred on Wednesday, according to a story posted on NPR's website. The unbeaten black caviar, nicknamed the Wonder from Down Under, has died at the age of 17. The retired Australian Mar won a record 25 consecutive races in her career from 2009 to 2013. Her triumphs included a dramatic victory at the Royal Ascot in 2012, when jockey Luke Nolan won despite easing up before the line. In Sao Paulo, according to Reuters, Brazilian media mogul Silvio Santos, who went from street vendor to owner of a business empire, which included one of the country's largest TV channels, died at the age of 93, his broadcaster said, SBT, on Saturday. Edward Stone, former director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and longtime project scientist of the Voyager mission, passed away on June 9th, 2024. He was 88. In Augusta, it was reported on Monday, Phil Donahue, a pioneer in daytime talk shows, has died at the age of 88. He died after a long illness. Donahue died at his home, surrounded by his family and his beloved golden retriever, Charlie, his family said in a statement to Today News. 
There have been daytime uh, celebrity talk shows hosted by the likes of Mike Douglas and Merv Griffin. There were more along the lines of The Tonight Show. British entrepreneur Mike Lynch has vanished after the yacht he was on board capsized near Sicily, resulting in at least one fatality. His spouse, Angela Bacaris, was among those saved following the incident. Lynch co-created the software corporation Autonomy and established Invoke Capital. Over keyboardist Tori Yazilwiker has died at the age of 54. The Norwegian experimental collective whom Yaliziger joined in 1997 announced his passing social media post on August 19th. Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman has died at the age of 90. He became synonymous with behavioral economics, even though he never took a single course in economics. Kahneman wrote the best-selling book, Thinking Fast and Slow. It debunked the notion that humans are rational beings who act out of self-interest. They act on instinct, he argued. John Aprea, the charismatic character actor who portrayed the young Salvatore Tessio in The Godfather Part II and was the father of John Stamos's character on Full House has died. He was 83. Aprea died August 15th of natural causes in Los Angeles, his manager will have been announced. Alain Delon, the French film actor who starred in classics, including Plain Soleil, Les Samurai, and Rocco and his brothers has died at the age of 88, his children confirmed. His children, Elaine Fabian, Anushka, Anthony, as well as his dog Lobo, are deeply saddened to announce the passing of their father, according to a statement shared with the French media. Tacho Mindiola, a veteran of the 1970s Chicano movement, who went on to create one of the nation's most successful Me Mexican-American studies college programs, has died. He was 85. The big picture, while a sociology professor at the University of Houston, Mindiola mentored thousands of Latino and Black students, including future state lawmakers, city councilors, business leaders, and journalists. Maria Brañas, an American-born Spaniard believed to be the world's oldest person at 117 has died, her family announced. In a post on Miss Brañas' account on X, her family wrote in Catalan, Maria Brañas has left us, she has gone the way she wanted, in her sleep, at peace, and without pain. When asked how she was able to live such a long, illustrious life, her family said, quote, Maria believed getting rid of toxic people in situations was the number one contributing factor for a long life. Retired senior Russian military commander has died at his home in Moscow. Russian media reported on Wednesday, just months after he was shot by a taxi driver during an altercation in the capital. Russian state news agency TASS reported that Dmitry Draval, a retired major general who had served as the deputy head for the Russian military's logistics, had died from, quote, acute heart failure, unquote, on Tuesday in Moscow, citing sources in the medical sector. A leader in the national and regional tribal housing arena has passed away. Brooke B. Kristovich died on July 13th, 2024, at the age of 61. He was Nagisha in Ingaluk, Adabashan, and was an enrolled member of the native village of Napiatumi in Alaska. Kristovich took on leadership roles within the National American Indian Housing Council, as well as the regional housing authorities within the Pacific Northwest and Southwest. And this concludes all of the deaths and resignations. Now on to the commentary section. Folks, simply put on the backs so of what we talked about last week and just a mop up continuation, it's important to remember in changing your mindset that you are, a, you are not a victim, you are a victor in Christ, period. The key here is to be solution oriented, not problem focused. There's been comments here that some have said about, well, I, I only hear bad news here. What's, where's the good news? Where's the encouragement? What am I to smile about? If you're saying that, you haven't changed your mindset because you don't understand clearly what this information means. And that's on you, not on us. If you can't see that, I don't know, we don't know what to tell you. Clearly, this is a changing of the guard, the death of the corrupt, the layoffs of evil corporations that have enslaved the lion's share of society are going away. Has it occurred to you that we're going to get new godly leadership, that God's people are going to rise up with this wealth and appoint good decision makers, good non-corrupt leaders that will actually represent the interests of you, your families, and your nations, respectively, wherever you live? Has it occurred to you that when these corporations go away, which are happening right in front of you, everywhere you look, that mom and pop businesses, family businesses like we had in the 1950s through the 70s, we will have a resurgence of that, that we're going back to basics. 
that's what the good news is. So please remember that going forward. It's critical. And uh, please, as a, a uh, housekeeping issue, um, we're happy to get questions. If you have questions about whatever, specifically the well transfer issues or something we said in the past, that's fine. But we would ask that you put that in the appropriate section. When we were not 100% exclusively a financial channel, even though that comprises much of what we do, we do have the common law trust section, how to lawfully avoid taxation, the health component with Perium and body science and other things. So please don't ask financial questions in non-financial related podcasts. Please keep it in the appropriate place. So I just want to make sure that that's uh, addressed. That does it for the weekly wrap up. As always, if anything urgent comes out, we will let you know accordingly as soon as we are able and are aware. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Enjoy the rest of the month as it promises to cascade more information into uh, what we believe will be the climax into September and the remainder of the year. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. Take care.